You're listening to The Starting Zone, a podcast about World of Warcraft and the people who play it. And now, here are your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to The Starting Zone, the podcast about World of Warcraft and the people who play it. Today is August 12th, 2024, and my name is Spencer Downey. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to the podcast. I'm joined today, as always, by my co-host, Jason Lucas. Jason, how are you doing this fine Monday? Well, Spencer, hello. Uh, Happy Monday to you. You just said it's August 12th, which means we are 10 days away from early access for War Within. Yes. So uh, that's pretty exciting. But I'm doing well. I'm back. I'm back home. Had a little vacay last week. Spent a lot of time relaxing and just kind of hanging out. A little bit of a lighter wow week as a result. But you know what? We're so close to the finish line here that... I don't even really care about doing anything in Dragonflight at this point. Like if we if we do it as a group, cool, that's fun. I'm into it. it and if not, I'm not going to be remotely upset about having a little bit of a break before we start ramping all the way up for expansion stuff. Yeah, so I suppose that means you probably weren't raiding very much or whatnot last week. No, no raids. No raids this past week. I don't think the team even ran without me even one night just for like a heroic clear. So you know, we'll see what happens this week. I know, I know, we're going to raid at least one more time because we got to do all the uh, the the all demon hunters and evokers raid for you know the night before early access goes out. But um, you know, if we don't end up doing it, anything this this week coming up, it's weird. Like Dragonflight's been a great expansion, but I think this is like the lamest uh, of lame duck you know uh, endings of an expansion ever because I think for a variety of reasons, right? Everything. The the release cadence was so fast throughout the whole expansion. The gap between Dragonflight and War Within release is very small. We had stuff like Plunderstorm and Remix. I mean, Remix is still going on for another week, you know, that is also like these avenues of different ways to play the game or like even pre-expansion prep, right? If that's yeah. the, the way that you want to go with a character. And yeah, so I, and I feel like also with the season four model, we have like, you know, this, I don't know, three month, four month long season, basically. And it's like you're super powered and everything, you know, you get to the end of the the kind of power curve there pretty quick. And it's just like, all right, uh, we're, we're ready to go. I mean, there have been there have been times earlier in the game's history where it was like we were still going pretty seriously. It was like, yeah, I don't know. This is this is the thing that we have to do in WoW. So, like, it's very important that we do this together because otherwise there's nothing that we're doing. It is not like that this time. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. You did your, um, have you done your, your, was it monk, all monk raid? Is that what you're doing this time? This go around? No, doing? we're doing all demon hunters, all demon evokers hunters. this time. That's yeah, I got, I, I got, I got overridden. It should have been, uh, I think it was, uh, Druid's turn. I think we did Paladin at the end of, uh, Shadowlands. Yeah. So, uh, I, th- I think it was Paladin's turn and I said, okay, so we're going to do all Paladin. They said, no, we want to do demon hunters and evokers. We'll do all f- flappy boys. <laughs> Druid's always said, the well, better one. Here's all right, if that's one. what we all want to do, but, you know, I'm uh, fine. The whole point is to have fun. So if, if people think this is going to be fun, then that's what we're going to do. And we'll do Dru- Druid next time, probably. The thing with all Druid Raid is it's too smooth. I know. Because you have all four <laughs> jobs covered. And, like, everybody kind of has some Druid spec they can play. Yep. Monk one is the funniest because n- almost nobody knows how to play any Monk specs. So. Well, it's not just that. <laughs> it's know. also and you don't there's have any no range. range. GPS. There's just no range. But. Yeah, which usually doesn't matter by, you know, I mean, we do sure. normal mode and it's like, you know, usually a couple people be geared up or whatever. But yeah, so, you know, I, I'm a little upset about the bucking tradition and not having just one class, but I think it's a decent compromise. It'll be fun. I got my my demon hunters all ready to go. So I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm definitely ready to step in there with her for next week. And I have this whole week, I guess I'll maybe I'll go get some bullion and just, you know, top up a couple pieces or whatever. But, um, sure. you know, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, I don't, I don't, at the moment, I don't have signups for tomorrow, which is kind of weird, but we'll, you know, we'll see if we get there. Maybe we'll do some stuff, but, um, it is a good time you know, to be taking a break. It is a, it is the ideal time. If you're someone who's like, Hey, I just want to level some characters. You can do the pre-expansion event. That's great. But as far as rating and whatnot goes, it's a good time to just like chill for a, a week and then, you know, yeah, I mean, it's still summertime. Again. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm like, I'm definitely willing to lead runs if we have interest, but I'm also not going to pound the drum for people to show up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Um, I did bring my, my laptop on vacation with me, uh, because 
we're just kind of chilling. We're, we're at a lake house and just no real agenda. So, I mean, what else am I going to do? I'm not out there, you know, jet Water skiing, skiing or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So it was actually a really good opportunity to do the, um, the pre, uh, pre expansion event stuff, the radiant echoes, um, been, I mean, we talked about the changes, uh, last week Yeah, and they, you know, they're so good. I feel like the whole structure of the event is great now and it's so lucrative since the last time we spoke on the show, like I got my dark iron warrior to 70, my blood elf paladin, Volpira rogue, uh, my horde Pandaren hunter, my blood elf mage, my goblin shaman and my Zandalari troll priest all 70 wow. i'm almost done with the orc warlock which is the last horde tune i have i don't have a horde evoker so i got to figure out if i'm going to make one of those or not i kind of want to wait and see if we get other classes drag theater can be and then make a horde drag theater of some different class yeah but it's just like it's seamless you just go do stuff you do the daily quest and that alone is like eight levels of the shot just for participating in that you know I have like five more allied races that are around level 50 that I want to cap out just because it feels weird to have them stuck there at 50 when the leveling is so smooth. And I want to do the dailies anyway to get the, the currency to buy the mogs and all that. So why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it'll be like, okay, what tunes do I want to kit out to, you know, in the 483 gear and, or the 480 gear and maybe get some 493s from the weeklies or whatever, try to get them ready to go. So that's been really fun. I think the structure that's great. And, uh, you know, you, uh, you don't have to spend a lot of time on it if you don't want to. But but if you grind it, you can get a ton of reward for it. You, you get the crests and you get all that stuff. So I've been yeah. really enjoying that, actually. So with the tr- changes they made now having like a week or so to have done it a bunch. Like, I, I think I think it's in great shape and, and perfect for getting people ready for War Within. Yeah. Now, um, now, when you went on vacation, you also said you brought a book with you that you wanted to read during that. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to mention this top of show because I think a lot of a lot of our audience would be interested in it. Um, I I was uh, Jason Schreier and his uh, his publisher were kind enough to send me a review copy of uh, his upcoming book, Play Nice. Uh, it comes out, I think, October eighth. I want to say. And it's the history of Blizzard Entertainment and including like the very recent history and right up until basically the present. It, it kind of it's it's the founding of the company by Mike Morheim and Alan Adham up through the layoffs that happened for Microsoft earlier this year. It's a very bumpy ride. It's it's a fascinating read. It's got a lot of interviews with um, mostly past Blizzard employees. There are some interviews with some current employees, I think, but it it adds so much context to the events of the last few years around the company. Uh, I think it, it paints certain things in a, in a different light. The the reporting is very even handed. And um, I mean, there, there's so much, you know, primary source material with the interviews that he got and everything. So it's really a fascinating story. Blizzard's company history is so unique in this industry. And um, you know, it keeps the, the, the twists and turns just keep happening. So, uh, thank you to him and, and to his publisher for hooking me up with a copy a little bit early. It was a book I wanted to buy and read anyway, and not having to wait until October when it would be a lot less convenient for me to read the book in a short a period of time was great. And, uh, yeah, kind of weird vacation reading maybe, but, uh, it was, it was perfect for me. So I highly recommend that it's called, it's called play nice. And if you're interested in sort of how Blizzard started, how it got to where it got, and what happened once it got there. I mean, it's it's so comprehensive, and you know, it makes things like it really it, it gave me a, a bit of a different perspective on the relationship with Activision Blizzard and that whole situation. It gave me some different perspective on the the lawsuit stuff, even you know, going back to twenty one. Obviously, I mean, I, I think that's still fresh in everybody's minds, and you know, the way he he kind of lays it out and the people that he spoke with. It was a very uh, complicated issue, and I think some there were some elements of media uh, sensationalizing that happened with certain elements of the story, which he goes into in great detail. And again, primary sources with people involved in it. So it, it's really a, a fascinating read. I couldn't really put it down. I think I read like most of it in one sitting. So yeah, check it out if if that is of interest to you. If you're interested in in, in the business of making these games, um, it is it was. It was really cool. So check it out definitely for sure. And and thank you for sending me one. Awesome. Well, let's hop into what's going on this week in World of Warcraft. (music) 
All right, this week is the arena skirmish bonus event, meaning that the honor gains from skirmishes are increased by 50%, and there's a quest to win 10 of them, which gets some conquest and honor. Yeah, I don't really necessarily know how lucrative and beneficial this is at this stage of the, of the whole thing. So, you know, it, it's something to be aware of, but I don't necessarily think it's something that people should be hopping into and, and trying to accomplish something unless you're buying transmog, I guess, at this point. Uh, the last hurrah for this week, obviously, you're you're doing whatever one you choose, hopefully, as opposed to just being randomly assigned to you. It's still kind of, you know, we hope we're still we're still, still, hoping. still wonder if they're going to fix it at some point where you can we pick got, like which one. We got two weeks left for this uh, yep. to potentially work in any way where it might matter at all ever. Um, yep. And yeah, it still hasn't worked for me anyway. I get Zerla Cavern every time, yep. which is okay because it's the one I would probably pick. But it is weird. Like sometimes the UI glitches and it's like there's a box. It looks like you could pick what you want to do and then it kind of flickers and it just assigns you Zerla Cavern usually. So we'll see we got patch maintenance in na tomorrow so yep. you know once we can actually get in and see then maybe maybe this will work although it's a lot less exciting considering that the tiny window where you're going to be able to choose it wasn't working right yeah yeah it, at this stage it's like i'd rather you dedicate your time to fixing something else this is going away soon enough it's fine uh we also have gravity laps happening as the pvp brawl that's eye of the storm where gravity turns off once a minute so if you want to mix it up with some anti-gravity fun inside of Eye of the Storm, be sure you check out the Gravity Laps Brawl this week. And if you win one, you get some Marks of Honor, Conquest, and Honor. Again, if you're looking to purchase Transmog, good way to do that. Of course, the world bosses are up and they are awakened and you can get nice 499 eye level loot off of world bosses. So if you want to knock them out, feel free. And the Mythic Plus affixes for the week. Oh, actually, I'll, I'll let you know that uh, it's Liskanoth, the Future Bane, the Ice Proto Dragon in Thaldrastis that's up this week. Um, the Mythic Plus affixes for the week are Tyrannical, Afflicted, and Bolstering, meaning bosses have more health and deal increased damage. While in combat, Afflicted Souls periodically appear and seek the aid of players. And when any non boss enemy dies, its Death Cry empowers allies, temporarily increasing their damage by 20%. And this effect stacks. This is an ugly ugly tyrannical week i just i gotta say you're dealing with tyrannical bosses with afflicted happening which is all well in combat which means that it'll be happening all through the fight so just fyi you're dealing with tyrannical boss fights that are longer boss fights that are harder boss fights while dealing with afflicted trash is also something you have to deal with afflicted during and it bolsters which means that the big pulls that you're doing you have to be careful about how frequently something's dying and how often something's dying in this case with uh with bolstering you tend to want to get everything low and then kill it all at once so that you don't have one build a boss happening where one mob is going to be doing a ton of damage. Now, bolstering does wear off over time, so there is the chance of like kiting stuff around. But remember, if you're kiting stuff around, you're still locked in combat, which means afflicted is still showing up. So FYI, you still have to deal with that too. So yeah, it's it's this is like not the worst tyrannical week, but it it's up there as a bad tyrannical week, I would say. Well, yeah, I I don't disagree with that, but I think there's elements that also make it feel worse than it is, which is that we are less than two full weeks out from this yep. being really of concern to a lot of players. I mean, not everybody's going to be in early access, but a lot of people are going to be in early access. So, you know, we're we're just in a super you know sunset period here for all of this stuff, and this is a this is an annoying combo, and it's not really how you want to go out. I think. Yeah, like I, I don't know if I'm going to do any keystones this week. We'll see. There's really just no point in doing them anyway for for my main. You know, it's not like I, I really need any other gear or anything to get ready for expansion. And you know, afflicted just stinks. It's it's one of the worst affixes in my opinion, as we've said many times since they introduced it in season two. Like, it's you know, it's very comp dependent. You have to have there are classes that cannot do anything about afflicted mobs and you need to make sure that you don't have too many of those classes in your group because you need to deal with them. Uh, bolstering on non fort isn't that bad, but it is, you know, it's annoying. It, it's, it's annoying for sure because you have what's supposed to be easy trash that then can become dangerous, you know, certainly. So that is, you know, it's a concern and yeah, afflicted happens constantly. Even when you're fighting the tyrannical bosses, you're going to be fighting for 30% longer, give or take, you know? Yeah. Um, that's just more attention being pulled away from what you're doing on the bosses that are already harder. And it's, you know, eating healer mana and dispel CDs and everything like that. So this is like not really one of the combos you want to see when you're this close to the finish line. Right. Like I, I can't even, I, I guess like if you're still really pushing hard because you haven't quite knocked out 
Keystone Master or Keystone Hero yet, then you kind of you get what you get at this point, right? We're down to the last two weeks, so you got to just bite the bullet and get in there. But it's not like a fun combo to play. It's not an easy combo to play compared to some of the stuff we see. And, you know, the motivation to do it is just rapidly evaporating. So I don't know. It's like early season or mid season, I would say like, this isn't a great week. And then you put all that stuff together with this combo. And it's like, uh, I don't know, probably just maybe level up a different character in radiant echoes or something. Go buy yourself some transmog. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you could certainly choose to spend the time now, however you want to spend the time now, I guess. Um, micro holidays, the free t-shirt day is going on on August 16th. So that's a few days away. That's this coming Friday. And basically there's going to be vendors inside of Stormwind. Uh, as well as actually it might be all of those capital. That yeah, is all of the capital cities, I think is where they actually take place now, uh, where they sort of circulate around and, you know, hand, fire off free t-shirts and you can collect them all from that vendor, or you can head out to, uh, like lower city in Shatrath, Stormheim, Grizzly Hills, Valley of Four Winds, uh, Zangara, Eastern Plaguelands and Winter Spring, where you can, uh, actually gather some more shirts there from specific vendors as well. Uh, obviously, there'll be like a wowhead guide as to the exact pinpoint as to where they all specifically are. But yeah, if you're looking to get in like the threads of Tyrion, you can find Melvin Shirtson, which is quite the name. It's perfect, right? In Eastern Plaguelands at Lights Hope Chapel. It's like this is one of the silliest in-game events, I think. Yeah, and you can go see Shirtsy Cloth Patch in uh, yeah. Winter Spring. Yeah. This is fun. You know, this is one of those deals where if you've done this and gotten all the shirts, then you're done forever. They haven't added a new shirt to this that I'm aware of in, in this whole time. But if you've never done it, like go, you could totally go do this on Friday. It just, you got to remember it's only one day. Yeah. Now each of the vendors that are a field that are not in the, you know, like the racial capital cities, they have like unique shirts that you can only get from them. Yeah. So keep that in mind. You know, if, if you want to just fill out that UI, get your collection, like you've got to go see them. The um, the entertainers kind of walk around in a circle somewhere in the city and they just randomly throw out shirts at different intervals mm -hmm. and you can click them and collect them. And they will if you hang out there long enough, you'll eventually get all the ones that they throw around. So that's that might be a little bit time consuming and it can be a little I don't know, a little frustrating because you're like, oh, I already got that one, but I still need this other one. But, you know, once you get them, they're yours forever. They're they're in your mod collection. You can mod them like you would any other shirt. And of course, you know, we live in this world of the modern transmog rules. Before it used to be like, well, I have to find like a chest piece I can put on yeah. that like shows off some of this shirt now. Or like I have to have like a, a mod set that I wear in the city because I don't actually have a chest piece on if I want to show off my look. I don't have to worry about that anymore, which is awesome. Like this, this holiday is actually... Well, the stuff that you get from this holiday is so much better than it was when they implemented it because they've relaxed all the transmog rules. So you can just walk around with your your chest armor hidden and showing off whatever T-shirt you have on. So, right. yeah. you know, if you if you haven't done it before, like this is a great opportunity to get a ton of unique mog. And there's some pretty cool options here, too. There's some pretty funny ones. It might be good for uh, when Trial of Style comes all the way back around in March. Yeah. Two more shout outs I'd put in here. One is for Guild Crewneck, who is the another vendor that's over in... Uh, in uh stormheim and then they have the shirt the cloth ripper who is the in grizzly hills so yeah like whoever got to name the npcs for this holiday just had the best time they did they tried to think of the best ones they could for sure uh all right for sure should i say mop remix uh it, it won't be long until this is all wrapping up uh august 19th is uh is sort of the last possible day you can do it so basically what they say is WoW Remix is available to play through August 19th and will shut down on August 20th at 7 a.m. Pacific time. So at 10 a.m. Eastern, that's when it goes away. And here's the information that we've all been waiting for. Uh, here's what happens uh, to your character when it converts over to the live game character. All currencies, items, except gold and quests will be removed from the time runner and their bank during the conversion process. So make sure to spend your bronze so for those of you who are hanging on to bronze, hoping that it would be some sort of gold conversion, it doesn't sound like that's happening. Uh, the character conversion process may take several minutes to complete after you log in on your character. You will need to log into each time runner for the conversion process to take place. The character will retain their level. They'll receive 467 eye level gear for level 70 characters appropriate to their current specialization. Lower level characters receive lower item level gear appropriate to their level. 
Characters will receive four 30-slot bags with one 26-slot reagent bag. They will unlearn collection, un, sorry, unlearned collection items like ensembles will be sent to the character's mailbox. Uh, so if you happen to have those inside of your bank and you haven't used them, that's where they're going to go. Characters will be relocated to either Ogrimmar for Horde characters or Stormwind for Alliance. And uh, characters will retain any gold they earned in Mists of Pandaria and receive a Time Runner's parting pack with a small amount of gold with scales with the character level to get them started in War Within. So I'm good with all of this except one big thing, Jason. Can you can you guess what it is? No. It's I the can't. gear I item know. level. It's the gear item level coming in at 467. You think it's too low? I think it's too low. I think okay. that I think that your character has gone from feeling like it's at 600 item level inside of Missa Pandaria to suddenly having the culture shock of a bring back down to 467. And I think that is too low. I think they should be putting people around the 500 item level mark is what I think they should be doing for these characters so that these characters are going into War Within feeling like they are at least a little bit powerful. Not like, hey, the gear I just happened to find off of a mob I killed inside of Dragonflight right now is better than this. That I think is too bad. I think 467 is okay. okay. I think it's okay. I okay. think it's fine. It's it's like fine for, you know, for current power level going into War Within. Uh, you'll probably be replacing stuff pretty fast and furious to start doing those quests, yeah. but it shouldn't be... It shouldn't be like a big hurdle to climb. You know, I, I think it's I think it's good to, in my opinion, it's sort of good to have it be a bit of a, a downgrade from like where you would get the event gear, the 480s and stuff you can get. And I mean, granted, if you've been doing Radiant Echoes, you can always move those, move that currency over to a time runner once they get dumped out into the the main realms and you can buy stuff. Or if they if you have if you've been collecting war bank stuff you know the the war bound to token i keep i keep wanting to call them tokens but they're pieces of gear if you've been collecting those you can slap them right on there i i think it it somewhat preserves people's investment in radiant echoes and it makes radiant echoes like worth it to have used it to gear a character up if you spit these out at like 480 it's like why did i there could be an argument in some regard like why did i even bother playing this to level this character up or whatever so i think it's okay and um considering the way that they've redone quest reward gear, I think you're going to power up from quests a lot faster if you're not in that like top, top end gear than we have in previous expansions. So I think it's okay. I'm glad that they put this post out decently early, more than a full week in advance from when it's actually getting shut all the way off, right? It's going to be yeah. basically NA maintenance. Um, is It's going away next week. I'm glad that they said that your bronze is not going to convert into anything. You know, like there's no reason to hoard bronze because yep. there's going to be some minuscule gold conversion. Like, yeah, if there's something you haven't bought with bronze, buy it this week. Yeah. You know, just uh, just to get out in front of stuff and just, you know, answer a bunch of questions. Four 30 slot bags and a 26 slot reagent bag is pretty nice. That's that's a nice little benefit. That's that's plenty of storage space coming into the main mainstream timeline. And, you know, OK, there's a little bit of. A little bit of gold to get started with and everything. You get some gold playing remix, but not very much at all. And then you're a level 70 character and stuff could be expensive, you know, gear repairs and all that stuff. It kind of adds up if you don't have any kind of seed money and moving it from another character may not be a thing you want to do. So I like that. I'm, I'm just I'm glad that they got some communication about this at, it's early enough. It could have been honestly a little bit earlier. Even I'm sure they knew what they were going to do with this before earlier today. I mean, this just came out right before we started recording. Right. The one thing I got to say that I, I think is kind of weird. Uh, they never did any kind of final push for remix, you know, like well, they, 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 they did, did some adjustments like a they, month ago, but yeah. Yeah. Like they, and they did some tuning adjustments after pre-patch came out and everything kind of shifted, but they yeah. didn't do any kind of like, double bronze weekend or like you know we, we saw those those big the the really big tuning changes came in in like early june yeah and they were awesome they were great and that was part of the reason why a lot of people like me were able to just finish the event entirely and go there's nothing else i even want to do here but i think we're all kind of expecting that final surge type of thing where it's yeah. like okay we're doubling bronze again we're doubling threads whatever go get whatever you want 
you know, in terms of currency, in terms of power, in terms of vendor stuff, go do it. I mean, yeah, they like they retune the raid bosses and everything. That's that was great. But and I mean, we kind of talked about this, I think, on the show a few months ago where I was talking to people who were just like, I'll just wait until they buff it again. And, you know, the kind of dangerous game you play yeah. with that because you only have so many resets, you know, so many daily resets, so many weekly resets, whatever. So much like actual time on Earth that you can participate in this. And if you're holding out waiting for Blizzard to, you know, just juice the the bronze yield that much more that day may never come and then you might not have enough time so well blizzard did put out a post i think two months ago saying that they had no plans to do some sort of final push like they put out a post stating hey we're not gonna do this i think there was still a lot of hesitation about like ah they'll do something because since then they like nerfed the bosses and did other things yeah. like that but you're right that they didn't end up having like a double bronze weekend or some sort of explosive excitement thing that happened with it and i i I feel like they would have benefited from it. I feel like there's no harm in doing a, hey, the final week is double bronze, get in there and get the last few things you need kind of idea. Like, I, I don't think there's a, yeah. a harm in doing that. It doesn't punish the people who put the time in earlier because they would have earned substantially more bronze over the time they put in earlier than what someone could earn in a week. But, you know, it, it would, I think, motivate people to hop back in just before expansion launch to be able to to check out some, some Pandaria stuff before it went away entirely. So yeah, we get like yeah. that stretch goal thing. Like ah, uh, this is just too. Uh, I'm not. It's I'm never going to get this much bronze, right? But if they double it one last time, then like okay, maybe that you know it could be cool for some people. Yeah. I personally, yeah. I'm glad that I got everything I got out of the out of the event and that I got done well before the finish line. And like yeah, I wouldn't be upset if they if they buffed all that stuff last minute to just help people grab whatever stuff they wanted on the way out but i'm just i'm surprised i didn't end up doing it i guess is really my point i just yeah. i figured it was kind of a given that like all right yeah they say they have no plans to change anything right now but you know when you get down to the wire they they want to kind of you know entice people to come check it out or pay off that that kind of time investment yeah. so yeah in this case it doesn't look like that's going to be happening but also, like, if you're like me and you kind of buttoned up Remix a few weeks ago, then you don't even really have to think about anything. It's not even on your radar, not, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to, like, go clean out your character's inventory or do something with gold or whatever. Like, it'll be there, you know, next week after maintenance, and then you can go play. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hot fixes. All of Less Mythic Raiders can rejoice. They finally fixed the ads that spawn on Queen Ashara inside Eternal Palace from expansions ago um they addressed an issue that prevented uh Athenel Ath and Serenus from properly spawning during the encounter that's resolved so for those of you who are farming queen ashara for transmog you can rejoice that your fight won't bug anymore <laughs> at the time that was really irritating it's good uh, i'm glad it's fixed now that's good we have a few fixes like that happening actually uh radio echoes event the memories of kalimdor eastern kingdom and northrend will now stack up to a hundred and will no longer drop once you have acquired its uh, its related essence or have fully created the band of Radiant Echoes. So that is a new change to that for folks. Um, this is nice because I, dude, these would drop from like everything. And you only need 20 of each and then you make the band of Radiant Echoes, right? Yep. So like why they made them drop past 20 in the first place and then why make them stack to 100? None of that I really understand, but there might be some tech reason why it was convenient to do it that way. Yeah. And it was weird like when you would get some, but you couldn't pick them up because you had like, let's say you had 17 and then five of them dropped, but they wouldn't go to your character because you you put you put you over the caps so or go to your yeah. mailbox yeah. and you can't take them out of the mailbox. Yeah. You get to delete yeah. some to exactly. get exactly yeah. the 20. Yeah. Like, I guess that's probably uh, why, because you might not get, you know, exactly 20 as you go through. But um, continuing to have these drop after you made the heirloom was really obnoxious. It's like, I can't do anything with this ever again. Like, please stop giving me these. But, or, yeah. or make them worth lots of gold. One of the two. If I could sell oh, them, you, you know, then that's fine that, too. Uh, yeah. I didn't consider that option. That's but the yeah, they option. didn't do that. So no. at least, you know, these are not going to be filling up your bags in your mailbox anymore, which is great. I mean... I think it's like, I don't know if you're ever going to use the band of Radiant Echoes. Heirlooms are in a really weird spot right now, but yeah, you're probably never going to be able to get this again. And it doesn't take a lot to get it. So if you haven't done that so far, I would definitely put that on your list for this week. All you got to do basically is just do stuff for Radiant Echoes in each of the three zones. Get 20 each of these memories of each of the three zones. 
combine it with the 25 currency ring you can buy from the vendor and then you have your new heirloom forever and ever and if they make heirlooms good again someday you'll be glad you did it yep and, and there's been multiple rings over the years so this way you'll have two rings that you can equip which is really nice to do with heirlooms uh the dollar on defender armor pieces with champion track should now be eligible for conversion with the revival catalyst so people who want to actually get some more tier gear going as they head into the next content can do that um, they reduced the hit point scaling on all event bosses so that they should now be killable in a more reasonable time frame. So that's uh, that's always a fun one to see. Amazing. These mini bosses include Hogger and Thorum and the final bosses uh, with Anixia and Ragnaros. I always, I always love reading these notes because, again, the way they frame them means that you don't know if they made their health higher so they don't die as fast so more people can tag them. Or if they made them lower so that they die easier. I know in this case they made them lower. But it's just one of those cases that we've seen times before with like elites where they're like, oh yeah, this elite was dying in four seconds. So we've increased its health and health scaling so that people can actually get there in time to kill it. So I always find the wording on patch notes to be very interesting from Blizzard. They're just not clear of going, yeah. we increased. <laughs> you're like, okay, cool. I mean, yeah, more reasonable is really loaded, right? Yeah. That could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. But um, there was kind of a funny ebb and flow with this this past week because at one point they increased the scaling of the radiant echo mini bosses specifically right and they had already increased the scaling on the event bosses before they made the timing changes to the event so that put it in a really weird spot where sometimes it would take forever to kill that end boss which was good in a way because there was nothing else going to happen for the next 90 minutes but then they changed it right and so they changed the flow of the whole thing. And now the boss's health is buffed. And now the mini boss's health is buffed. And so now everything takes forever because the boss doesn't die fast enough. The mini bosses don't die fast enough, which doesn't keep the event churning and moving into the next phase over and over again. So there was a couple days there where this felt really weird. Like suddenly everything kind of ground to a halt because you weren't depleting the bar fast enough to spawn the boss because it took forever to kill Thorim, right? Yeah. And then the boss would take forever to kill. That was a drag. And I, I don't know if I, did I say it on the show uh, last week? I, I may have because I had played a little bit after the changes came in. Like it needed to be reverted because it actually was very detrimental to the overall flow of this. And like, yeah, it sucks when you miss a tag on a boss and then you don't get credit for it. And then you got to wait, but now you're only waiting maybe 15 minutes for it to respawn. And then there's other stuff for you to go do, yeah. which also dies quickly again. So I think the HP scaling to me, it feels like it's in a good place. Now the event moves, man, you're just going from point A to point B to point C until it's boss time. Repeat the process, get your XP, get your gear, get your currency. So really good change there. I, I, that is, I mean, that laundry list of tunes I leveled to 70 this past week, this HP reduction change is pretty specifically why I had time to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, tomorrow we are getting a tuning patch. It is it is launching out. Basically, every single class and spec is getting touched. Um, we'll obviously highlight the, the Druid and Warrior ones that we care about just to make sure people are aware, but I would encourage everyone to go out check the class notes because there's large tuning passes to like everything that's out there. So uh, balanced druids, for example, they are going to get a 6% static spell damage buff. So they're just right off the bat. All their damage is increased by 6% as far as what happens with that and the damage they deal. They're also making wrath and starfire cast with uh, umbral embrace now be affected by uh, the passive bonuses from mastery, uh, which is also really nice. And the uh, wrath casts by convoke, are now also triggering the uh, Umbral Embrace as well as Astral Smolder. So that's just a lot more damage stacked on to those cast abilities as opposed to casting a vanilla generic one. You can now cast it with the actual buffs from the uh, the talents you have through that. Resto Druids are just getting like a straight across big healing buff. Uh, every the, the lowest buff in increase they have is 15% on Tranquility, Rejuve, and Wild Growth. Those are three massive heals for a Resto Druid, and they're being increased by 15%. Outside of that, Scenarian Ward's getting 20%. Uh, Embrace of the Dream is getting 50% increased. Uh, Life Bloom, Heal Over Time by 5%, and the Bloom by 30%. Reju's Mana Cost is getting reduced by 0.1% mana, so it's a little bit cheaper for folks there. And Nourish is getting a 100% healing increase. They are doubling the healing that Nourish does to make it more viable for folks. 
And we also know for those Restro Druids out there, Convoke the Spirits is now going to cast four additional spells over its duration, specifically for Restro Druids. So yeah, it's that that is that is some large increases. They've also gone through and, and buffed up damage for uh, a lot of the cat weaving. If you're someone who's wanting to do cat weaving, um, all the, a lot of your damage spells like Rip, Rake, Shred, Ferocious Bite, 15% increase across the board, not affecting PvP, just clarifying that for all these. Uh, but then Sunfire damage also increased by 15%. So our, the, the AoE, depending on if you spec into or not, also affecting that in a big way. So good to see uh, all these buffs coming in. But yeah, if that's any example of what's happening to other classes you're going to feel this tuning pass tomorrow. It is going to feel good for the majority of classes out there. And Warrior does not seem to look any different from that, Jason. No, the Warrior changes coming in are, are pretty nice, really. Um, a lot of damage buffs. And, you know, uh, I think Prot Warrior is always sort of maybe a little bit middle of the pack or worse when it comes to, to tank damage. And, I mean, as we got into a couple weeks ago, like, I don't want my job to be doing damage, but I do play in Prot spec, like, exclusively, including when I'm outdoors and stuff. So... I want that to feel good. Um, you know, getting some shield slam damage baseline across the entire class is cool. And, you know, we are seeing the um, the self-healing tuning coming in. Like, it, that is going live with this patch that we talked about recently. So, you know, uh, you, pain and gain, which which heals you for your max health based off of rage throughput, that's, that's getting chunked down. And um, some other things are changing, too. Um, well, impending victory nerf is apparently coming in, even though that was reverted on beta at one point. They've been kind of messing around with how much it's actually going to heal you, you know. But um, I mean, just massive damage buffs to like. I mean, just first of all, they just took the the knob and turned it up thirty percent for melee attack and all ability damage, just across the board. Everything you do does thirty percent more damage. And then you know, yeah, shield slams getting that class level buff revenge. Uh, revenge damage going up, execute damage getting increased by 50%. Like they really want warriors to feel good about, prop warriors to feel good about pressing execute, which is cool because it costs a fair bit of rage, right? And your rage is not really supposed to be for that. But if you're like off tanking or whatever, it's great to weave it in there and, and throw some executes. The, big, the biggest thing I want to pop in there real quick, the biggest thing mm -hmm. I notice about this sort of damage increases is like we are heading into leveling characters. And like you said, you like to play prod in the outdoor world, this is one of those things where they could easily go, hey, guess what? For the leveling experience, everyone's doing a whole bunch more damage. Once we start seeing what stuff's like in two, three weeks from now, we could do another tuning pass and bring stuff back a bit if we needed to. Like, True. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be, you know, I, I would like this is a massive damage buff to Prot Warrior. And if it gets rolled back a bit, you know, I'm not going to be super devastated about it or whatever. And that is not a devastator joke. Uh, sorry, pardon the uh, unintentional pun. You know, uh, th there are some nerfs in, in here, too, and it, it, beyond just the self-healing thing, but it's stuff that we knew was coming. The defensive stance, you know, baseline uh, damage reduction being uh, reduced, but then the fight through the flames talent slightly being buffed. So you 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 take slightly less magic damage it, with fight through the through the flames active in defensive stance. You know, I think it's a good trade off. Warrior should be managing physical damage taken through their various abilities magic damage is always a bit trickier so toggle in defensive stance I, I there that presents more of a gameplay option there right you know the damage reduction from punish which is when you shield slam a target it has it puts like a stacking damage reduction on them that that's getting nerfed we knew that was cut none of this stuff is a surprise from following you know beta development but it is you know it's coming in this week so just taking that, just taking all that defensive and self healing stuff down just a bit of a notch. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll feel good and, and create that kind of texture that we want to see in combat where, like, Prot Warrior, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. You can't just dump all your rage into revenge and execute because they do more damage now. You have to use your rage to keep shield block up. You have to use ignore pain. You have to use all these tools in your kit to survive this damage and to make yourself healable for your healers to keep you alive. And, you know, I think I, none of this stuff to me, looking at the looking at the kind of mixed bag here of like damage buffs and damage taken nerfs, it still seems like a win. I, I think, you know, getting this much extra damage, especially in this phase of the expansion we're moving into, we're getting way more damage than I feel like we're getting hurt by the damage reduction nerfs. Right. So it'll probably feel really good. Uh, this, you know, in this little window here where we're still playing Dragonflight, like if you go do dragonflight raids and dungeons with all, all this extra damage you don't care about the damage reduction because you're not taking any damage anyway if you're geared out so yeah um 
you know, that might that might be fun if I actually end up doing anything. Cool. Uh, as far as other hotfixes go, the cross from guild bank function should now be available. It should be working after tomorrow when this patch goes live. So hopefully that is up and running the way they say it's supposed to be. And another harken back to old content, High Inquisitor White Mane in Scarlet Monastery of old now correctly drops loot. Apparently they just had, they, you know how we used to talk about world bosses being the last one to get to the loot table and sort of being stuck with whatever was left over. Apparently there was just nothing left for White Mane. Got yeah, I, it just, no. just didn't show up that day for no. the loot distribution. That's I right. wonder Cold when this sick. actually broke. Like, yeah. Did this break because it remix? Like, I definitely ran into weird issues with um, with that fight. Although it says Scarlet Monastery of Old, so that I guess it doesn't mean the remix version of it. No, I was wondering if like something happened or it was noticed or something between um, Season of Discovery, like whether in Season of Discovery they were like, "Oh, hey, this boss isn't dropping loot," so they fixed it, but then they didn't fix it in the live game. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know how much that data crosses over or whatever, yeah. and like. Yeah, because you can actually I, you can actually go back and access the pre MOP Scarlet Monastery in the live game now. So I guess it must have been specifically that because of the way that this note is written. And I don't remember when that came back in. It came back in over the course of Dragonfly, right? Or is it older than that? I, I can't quite remember. So no, I don't remember either. I don't know how long it's been broken for, but if you've been farming Scarlet Monastery of old for white main loot and yeah. tearing your hair out because it's not happening, it should be happening. Uh, not now, but after maintenance this week. Exactly. Uh, the role icons for the group finder have been replaced with new art for improved readability. So keep that in mind. And there's apparently, this is something I'm really curious about. They changed the font colors uh, on the, the quest background you're using to for, for dark mode. So it should use all white font now. So apparently there is a dark mode for the quest thing built into the game, which I was not aware of and might just be going live now. And that dark mode has the white font now so i'm, I'm i really want to see what this looks like I, I have not seen this before if someone else yeah. has been using this for like months and i didn't know it existed <laughs> then you know I, let us I didn't know. know i didn't know either but I, yeah so i don't know when i don't know when dark mode came in for the quest ui uh i the quest ui did just get a ton of new features a couple of weeks ago and i've been a little busy with other stuff so i haven't really been poking around in there so maybe it was new with the previous patch or maybe i don't know but <laughs> maybe it was um, dark mode but the font color stayed black so you just couldn't read anything you just turned your quest right thing it was just dark you might as well yeah. just alt z it at that exactly. point and just yeah. not even have the ui but yeah yeah i'll have to like dig into this after maintenance and actually see what it looks like i I don't know. I, I use dark mode a lot on various apps that I use on desktop and on mobile, but I don't know if I want dark mode for quests and wow, I guess I'll have to see what that looks like. Yeah. There was a YouTube video that came out this week for war within called threads of destiny. Uh, the little blurb they have for it is as the might of the Nerubian kingdom of Ashkahet falters, their queen must decide on the choices she's willing to make to ensure her people's survival. And yeah, this is another one of those animated comic book, you know, graphic novel style uh, type of videos that you can check out and enjoy. Uh, I'm not going to spoil any stuff in it, but it's uh, it's cool, worth checking out. And these are always nice lead-ins to the expansion, so it's always good to see them. Yeah, I think this is a great one. Uh, the The only problem here is we don't have credits, so we don't know. Yeah, they, they weren't published with the post, so we don't know who directed it or yeah. or anything like that officially at this moment in time. Um, so it'd be cool if they would include those at some point. But um, I, I thought this one was was great, actually. Like, I kind of run hot and cold with these. I think, like, the ones for Dragonflight really were, they were okay, but they didn't really stick with me. You know, I, th I thought, yeah. like, the BFA ones were incredible. The Legion ones were really good. And the Shadowlands ones were actually pretty good, too, which was weird because of Shadowlands. But um, this one, I think, does it really does a great job of getting us ready for Season 1, right? And... Because one of the main characters here is Queen Anserek, who is going to be our, you know, our initial end boss of the first raid. And so really establishing sort of who she is and who her people are and where they're sort of existing as we enter the story with them. And also setting up Zalatath a bit more, bringing her in, doing something that's maybe a little bit less mysterious like Zalatath cuts a really interesting figure and she's she's a super cool bad guy so far but the tangible stuff hasn't been there as much I feel mm. like and in this piece like this is you really see her start start to like 
you know, lay out the game board, so to speak, right? Start start putting some pieces together. And so I really, I like that element of it, of sort of simultaneously building up Anserek and Zalatath as these, you know, different threats that are going to be impacting what the players are doing. I, I really I, I really like that. It's it's like five minutes long, but it, it, it gives you so much to go on in terms of like, why do we care about this? Or like, why is why why are these like baddies that we're going to go fight in the next few months and several years, respectively? And also just the illust- some of the illustrations in this piece are incredible, just really gorgeous to look at. So, yeah, this was good. I, I assume we're going to get some more of these because they, they're usually a series, but nothing else is announced as, in terms of, you know, at this moment as we're recording. Um, so I don't know. Maybe we'll get one tomorrow or something. I think this one came out last Tuesday, right? So. Maybe this is these are Tuesday releases until expansion, but um, I think it, I think one thing that we learned in recent years with with this game is it's really important to set up your bad guys, your baddies. Like they got to you, you got to have an investment in them in some way, right? You gotta you you have to understand what makes them tick, and you have to understand what makes them a threat. And that was easy with Arthas, right? That that was all that heavy lifting was done years before from other game stories and stuff. It was easy with Illidan. It was even easy with with Deathwing. You know, and Garrosh is a character that they built up over the course of several expansions to kind of become that that super baddie that you understood like why we wanted to fight him, right? Yeah. And then you you kind of take that thread all the way through to where you end up with Jailer, where it's like even the most uh, like generous accounting i could give you of it is like well his uh his motivations are very esoteric right his methods are esoteric like it's very mysterious if you read a lot of the supporting information then the jailer makes sense as a bad guy and that's like the most generous way i could really describe it yeah you know it's like at the very best like if you read the sylvanas novel and you read chronicle volume four and you read like every scrap of text you could find inside of shadowlands then like maybe the jailer is sort of a compelling villain in some ways, but most players would are not going to do all of that. First of yeah, all, the average player would look at the jailer and go, Oh, he was one of those like hierarch people who was kicked out by everyone else and he's bitter about it. And so he's angry and going to destroy the universe. That would be the average right. player who paid attention at all kind of perspective. And I, I think it's a fair yeah. assessment because yeah. that's what, that's what the game presented us. Right. Yeah. And like, yeah, just not as compelling as some other, you know, uh, box art, key art type of villains that we've had in the past. And um, also his arc was was relatively short, right? He's sort of one yeah. and done in, yeah. inside of one expansion. We know that Zalatath, I, I got a feeling that Zalatath is going to be around uh, beyond the War Within. Um, and, you know, Anserek herself, I, I, who knows? Uh, you know, that might be a situation where we defeat her and then that's the end of her story in, in season one. Fine. She's the raid boss for this raid and not every character needs to have this huge legacy and impact on the overall story. But through this piece, like we, un- we very clearly understand her motivations as a villain and we understand the threat that Zalatath sort of empowering her people poses to our character's way of life. And so that's why I think it's cool. Like it's, it just, it lays the whole thing out. It, it totally, it gets, it gets me uh, definitely ready and, and interested to see like where this all goes as we play through season one story, play through this raid and, and see what's going on. And uh, with, with this, this like sect of Nerubians that we've never seen before, you know, they've been sort of yeah. isolated for, for so long from the rest of the world. Yeah, exactly. Okay, collecting appearances in The War Within. This is from Kaivak saying, Following the introduction of Warbands, we've seen a lot of discussion and received a lot of feedback from transmog collectors. We want everyone to know that we're currently working on some improvements to appearance collecting that are planned for the next patch release after uh, War Within release. So just remember that. It'll be the next patch that comes in after War War Within is released. First is an update to class-restricted gear. We're working to make it so that uh, non-cosmetic class-restricted gear can have its appearance collected by any class. Appearance collections will be retroactive to any gear in your inventory or bank. The intent is to make it uh, much easier to collect class sets from Legacy Raids where the gear drops directly. In other words, if you are someone who goes back and clears out the eye trying to get your alarm out and you get a bunch of really cool mage tier because it was a great mage tier back then, but you're playing a warrior, that gear, as long as it's inside your inventory or bank, 
will become collected and part of your collection on through your warrior having it uh, once this this patch content goes live. So yes, this means that there may be collectors out there who just start banking hordes and hordes of items for the next three months or two months. We will have to wait and see. Uh, but hopefully this patch comes sooner rather than later and we get that up and running for folks earlier because, yeah, that's great. I think it's a great change. I'm definitely looking forward to that happening. They're also still working on the much discussed update that makes it so that when quests are completed, all appearances from non-cosmetic item rewards will be granted. Regardless of whether that particular class could have seen or chosen them, we plan for this to be retroactive. So any quest that you have previously completed should grant all qualifying appearances when you first log in onto any character. The intent here is to remove the need for completing these quests on multiple classes in order to collect all the appearances they provide. Again, our intent is to Im implement the above with the next patch after the launch of War Within. Thank you very much. Yeah, man, great changes to Transmog Collection out there. Lots of people should be thrilled about this. This is very good news. Yeah, this is great stuff. It's it's a bummer that it wasn't ready for pre-patch and it's not going to be ready for expansion launch. Um, but this is kind of where this whole system needs to go in in a warbands universe right the class restricted gear thing is of particular interest to me because one of my little side projects of late is filling in transmog sets from way back when i have all the warrior transmog sets for each tier at least one one variety of it you know depending on if they had difficulty recolors or whatever but i have you know Every warrior set, I have some version of it completed, but that's about it. You know, I don't think there's some other class sets I have here and there, but I'm missing a lot of stuff. And the way the tier one and two stuff, like from Molten Core and Blackwing Lair, works, the items just drop. They're not tokens, and they're not, you know, they're not any other kind of item that then turns into the gear piece. Like Paladin shoulders just drop. And if you're playing a warrior, even though they're plate, you don't learn the appearance because it's it has a class restriction on it um so i'm really glad that's going away because it's going to be it's especially going to be huge for those uh those early raids you know tier one and two will be will be huge for this i don't know like what what they're going to end up doing with tokens like if they're going to make those warbound or whatever just to get the mog that would be great it, it would be uh, a little bit of a bummer if we live in in warbands universe and you go do a raid for mog and you get tokens that you just have to vendor um, yeah, so we'll see agreed. how that actually plays out but at least for the really old stuff i'm trying to think like there might be some other stuff scattered around in the in the newer raids that are class restricted but if you have that stuff, like I, I did, I did some of this. I did some Blackwing Lair the other day, and I was like, "Oh yeah, right." Like this is just priest gear or whatever, so I'm not going to learn this. But then I, I saw this post, and I was like, "Okay, I'm just going to leave it in my bags because I'll, I'll just I'll keep it on this character, and then I'll learn it once this patch goes through. Like I can spare a few bag spaces for a couple months on a character I don't play that much anyway, right? So that's a great change. The quest thing where we're going to get to is fantastic. And that's absolutely the way that it should work is like you do a quest that rewards warband armor. It's a, it's a, it's now it's everything is warband, right? So it's a warband yeah. quest. You do the quest. It rewards your character, a piece of armor that's appropriate for them potentially of their choice. And then you unlock all of the appearances for all the armor classes. That's awesome. The, what's not awesome is that it just doesn't work yet. Right. And, and, they want it to work retroactively, so it's not like you need to keep quest rewards in your bags or you need to go redo all the quests after the patch. But what if it doesn't actually work, you know, retroactively at that exact time when it goes live? Then there's going to be a weird holding pattern of like, do I go back and reacquire stuff? Do I wait for them to fix it? I don't know. And also, this was this was a, a thing that was like working on beta, and then there must have been some problem with it, so they pulled it. And then there was some official communication that went out that said like, oh, no, yeah, actually, like the way it's supposed to work is you don't get all the appearances, which obviously that response was wrong. Yeah. So they, you know, they clarified in this post, which is fantastic, but it's it's a bit of a bummer. It didn't all line up to just be like, bam, here it is. Here's your war band. Go get all your stuff like that would have been really nice. But, you know, it's just not not the realities of WoW production. My advice to you would be 
if you do old stuff for mog don't vendor anything yet you know if you yep. don't learn it if you don't get that little toast that says you learned it then just hang on to it because yep. if it's class restricted you should learn it i would say what probably by about let's say in two uh, months from now three like, months from like, now yeah. yeah like halloween give or take yeah, right something like much. that like you like we should see a patch come in where you'll you, you should learn it after you log in on the character or whatever yeah. so yeah yeah just you know just be aware i i'm in a spot now where it's like well do i do mog runs because i have these resets sitting here like i could do them and then hold on to the stuff do i do that or do i just wait and you know just save myself the inventory management puzzle and i i i don't have an answer on that yet i'm not sure what i'm gonna do yeah it might even be sooner than halloween because when they do the tuning pass after mythic content comes out or just before mythic content comes out that's the technically first patch after release that we normally see and that's typically two weeks True. after season one kicks off or a week after season one kicks off so it, we're, we could be like four weeks or five weeks out from seeing this we'll have to see where it where it lands yeah. with this sort of thing and you know, uh, it occurs to me too that Gamescom is coming up, and which come. I think Gamescom is the weekend between early access and expansion launch, so it's next weekend. Right. And um, if you remember, uh, many years ago when Legion was like launching around the same time as Gamescom, they announced patch 7.1 like at gamescom before legion was even actually out i think <laughs> which was so ridiculous at the time like we couldn't believe that had happened but i yeah i i wouldn't be shocked if at gamescom we get some kind of info about like what the first patch is going to be if it's a dot you know the dot five or what have you which will probably include these changes like we might be hearing about that like next week so that would be cool yeah Delves is the next piece of feedback that Kyvex is addressing, saying, Hi, everyone. We've gotten some updates for you as we are nearing launch. Thank you for all the great feedback so far. The issue regarding not being able to leave a Delve should be resolved with the latest beta build. We're also working on better messaging for when you, when you are on a team regarding which teammates are eligible for Delves. You should see some progress on that in the current beta build. On the content side of things, we flagged objects that Brand should never attack, Specifically, Nerubian cocoons. No more brand surprising you with a face full of webs. Uh, we've continued doing tuning to make sure things, uh, to make sure certain things and certain classes don't feel like they're having a vastly different experience in delves. Most notably, we've reduced unavoidable damage for casters wearing cloth armor. On that note, we've introduced a new curio designed by uh, to, designed to help brand feel more impactful for healers. It's called the Rage-Filled Idol, a combat curio, a curio. Players in the healing spec will find uh, they have an easier time acquiring this. With this curio, Bran will do noticeably more damage in combat. However, he will take damage every few seconds while in combat. Our goal of, th of this curio is to have healers engage more in healing Bran while also increasing his damage out output uh, with a cost associated with it. Healers should spend less time having to juggle between uh, damage and healing themselves if they choose to equip this curio. We'll continue to work to improve the experience of delves, uh, and we're hard at work determining what's next, what's the next feature after for season one. So, based on everyone's feedback, thank you so much, Kyvax. Well, that's excellent. I'm glad to see something being addressed for healers because I like healing. And so often experiences like this are developed around me trying to do as much damage as a healer as possible, which just isn't enjoyable. So I'm glad that this will be a, hey, apply this, just keep hots rolling on Bran as a druid and you'll be fine. Bran will do a lot of the damage and take a lot of the lead. That makes me happy. I think that's a good change. Yeah, this is really cool, actually. And um, I mean, delves are a really important feature, right? They got to feel good to all different kinds of players, regardless of what spec you're playing or how many humans you're playing with. Like delves really need to land, I think, for this expansion because yeah. it is one of our big new features. They're supposed to be evergreen, right? This is supposed to be a thing we have forever now. Yeah. So I think the tuning is important. You want it to feel good. You want it to feel as good for a fire mage as for a guardian druid as for a holy priest, right? Like, obviously, there, there are going to be different approaches and different challenges with that, but that should be the goal is that you could play it in any spec you want and it should be a, an appropriate challenge and it should feel rewarding. I do like the idea of having the option for heal specs to really just focus on healing and like your job is to heal Bran while he handles the damage dealing, especially as somebody who really has never healed in, in much of any capacity and doesn't really know how to do it. Like w what a low stress way to kind of get used to using your different tools in the healing spec, you know, follow an NPC around in a delve 
and keep them alive and do your stuff, use your buttons and get some rewards at the other end of it. That sounds really cool. So I'm glad that that's coming in and that there's a way to just like do delves in specifically healing focused. I mean, <laughs> let's let's invoke Torghast for a second, yep. right? Like remember remember that whole debacle? Like Torghast was a thing you had to do. Yep. You had to do it because you had to get your ashes to make your legendaries. And it was punishing, if not worse for healer specs because it wasn't really designed to be healed through entirely like you have to kill stuff yeah, you had to bring an a npc companion yeah, yeah right you couldn't really solo it in, in not in any way that felt good to actually do so yeah um you know i feel like this is this is a direct sort of through line from that like listen we learned our our lesson for making this in this content inaccessible to healer specs in in shadowlands so Here's another crack at it with more of an option where, yeah, you could sit in a heal spec and you can actually do that job. You could fill that role of healing and you can play through this PVE content solo in that regard. Like that seems really smart to me. So hopefully the, the tuning is locked in and, and feeling good because uh, delves need delves need to land. You know, yeah. we don't what I would love to do would be to move into a world where. We have delves forever as just this element of solo or small group play, this sort of capstone of the outdoor world experience. And we're not reinventing the wheel every two years with a feature that may or may not work. You know, I think right. delves have a lot of potential to just slot in there. And then that's a thing we do. It's on the content menu. It's a way to play the game forever. And then we iterate on making them cooler or different or adding different tech to them or telling different stories with them. And you know, continue to add variety to the mode, but we're not hitting the drawing board every expansion with some feature for people to go explore. We have delves. We know what they are. We we like them decently enough, and off we go on into the next thing. That's what I'm hoping for. And I, I feel like if they stumble out of the gate, they might push some kind of panic button and start doing something, you know, radical, when really what they need to do is just dial in the tuning here and, and make them something players want to do or look forward to doing or feel rewarded for spending time in. Yeah, but not feel like they have to spend time in them, right? That, that was the biggest the biggest flaw with Torghast is it went from being something people really enjoy doing to a chore really fast when they were like, hey, this currency that you need to be able to progress your end game and, and feel like you're you're going to be a, a powerful character, get your legendaries, you need to run Torghast to do. Or in this case, it's like, hey, if you need to, in order to get your legendary, you have to run 150 delves. They'll be like, that's okay, you've just killed delves for people. Right. Like, let's be clear. You can't right? tie it to an external system yeah. like that. And that, yeah. was, that was one of the other big Torghast sins. Yeah, yeah. So you got you to be careful with that stuff. All right, Mythic Plus updates. Uh, we have an update for a new bargain, Oblivion, where the crystals of Oblivion now move towards the previously targeted location of all players out of combat. These are, these are updates to current ones. Oblivion exists, Devour exists. Um, so yeah, so if all players drop out of combat, in other words, if your tank runs ahead and stays in combat... Crystals don't move. They're going to chill where they are. But if everyone drops out of combat, these crystals start moving towards their previously targeted location. So players will have to be on the lookout for the crystals. Second change, Devour. Devour now no longer prevents players from receiving healing. Thank you. Now it inflicts 1% damage down from 2% damage of the player's maximum health every one second. Great. These are good changes. I hate it when someone becomes immune to receiving healing. It feels incredibly punitive inside of any Mythic Plus scenario to be like, ooh, lining up a big great heal, bam, lands for nothing. Well, that's terrible. Why? Well, because they're immune to, they're, they're, to healing. You can't heal them right now. And you're like, ugh. Well, I just wasted a whole thing that I was doing because I didn't notice this one little debuff that happened on this one person that made them immune to healing. I'd much rather see someone's health get a dot like this where every one second it's ticking down and you have to manage that as a healer as you do regularly through the dungeon is managing people's damage uh, as as an affix in here. So I think that that's a good change. I like the counterplay of Oblivion of like keeping someone combat locked is kind of an interesting query, whether or not people are like, I'm going to hit this critter inside of the dungeon to stay in combat so that the crystals don't move. I think will be kind of a neat thing to sort of see play out and see what happens with that. Yeah, I mean, these affixes, you know, I feel like we're going to probably see a lot of changes to them once they go live because, you know, most of us are not really spending a lot of time testing them. Yeah, and yeah. they stood these up like pretty close to the end of the process. But, um, you know, the stuff we're doing with them sounds pretty smart. I don't know, like, 
if the oblivion crystals like if you're out of combat so there's if you're not fighting anything do they move to the previously targeted location then do they not like do anything because there's no enemies to intercept them so i don't i don't know but then you want to get them to get the buff so can yeah. you yeah like can you kind of extend that combat and and move them you know towards where you want to get the buff there could be some some decisions there and the devour changes sound really good devour is it's an affix that I think everybody sort of had a, an initial reaction to that was like, what we're right back to afflicted, but really I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as afflicted in terms yeah. of overall disruption, but yeah, making it so that you can still receive healing during it is, I think it's huge um, because you don't want to have deaths to something like that. Something you really can't control, right? Like even, even participating in combat you know using whatever your self-healing or leech or whatever is and getting external heals and that doesn't save you because you were low health and then devour kicked in and then you couldn't yep. receive healing like that feels terrible so i like that i like to change a lot and i mean tuning yeah cut cut it in half like that sounds good to me that sounds like a good place to start from so i you know i have a feeling that and we also saw a, like a laundry list of um dungeon tuning that we're not really going to get into because we haven't played the dungeons so we can't really discuss any you know thoughts about the changes that they're making but you know they are dialing in the tuning for the start of season one and including shortening up a lot of timers and stuff um i you know mythic plus tuning especially early in expansion is always a bit of a wild ride so i'm not expecting to step in there week one and just start crushing my way to Keystone Hero, you know. Right. Like I, uh, this is this is probably going to take a while for somebody at my level for them to get the tuning in, for me to get enough gear and and what have you. The cool thing to see, I guess, is like how how much they flexed on this stuff throughout this process this summer. I mean, they've made so many changes to the Mythic Plus system overall, and they've been tweaking these new affixes that they're coming in with quite a bit. So. I believe that they're going to get it right. And my mantra has kind of been like, it's not a question of, are they going to get it right? It's a question of how long is it going to take for it to feel like it's right, you know? And um, I think Mythic Plus is maybe one of the systems where we're going to feel that the most because, you know, the tuning is is the most challenging. It's the hard, it's some of the hardest content to do. And it's a small group, so you don't you don't have a lot of coverage from... You're not going to have every class or spec in a dungeon group, so that you know that kind of ends up favoring outliers or disfavoring them if they're outlying in the wrong direction. So, yeah, you know, I'm just I'm just buckling up. I guess is is the short <laughs> version of what I'm trying to say. Is like, I, I think a lot of what they're doing seems smart. It's, it seems like they're making some cool changes to the system, but we're not really going to know until we're all doing this together at the same time once season one starts on September 10th. Yeah, exactly. All right, last but not least, a little, another blast from the past post here from Kaivax who says, we looked into players who just received the Warlord's Death Wheel mount, uh, and the reason was something like a bug or crash that was invoked the instant that the mount was initially supposed to be rewarded, and then a fix that uh, for that that resulted in a recent update. There may be some other achievements that a very small number of players have also been missing that now they received. Um, yeah, if you're someone who was supposed to get this mount ages ago and were never really noticed it, and then you're like, hey, wait a minute, I logged in, I got the mount, what happened? Yeah, apparently they just fixed that recently in like a little patch thing that, I don't know, must have been tied it's to something so else. I don't know. I, I don't think they went back looking for this. I think they probably just fixed something else and it resulted in fixing this. That's that's my guess. Yeah, it had to be something to do with just the overall, you know, underlying logic with war bands and the way stuff yeah. was moving account wide and, and whatever. Um, I mean, the Warlord's Death Wheel, this is this is we're talking about the mount from Azeroth Choppers, right? So that was what during the the second year of MOP, I think. You know, so we're talking I think so. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah, it was like twenty eleven. <laughs> no, it was it was a little bit later than that, but not much. I I, I think this was the lead up to Warlords, or it was like the gap between oh, Myths and Warlords, right? So we're talking about 2013, 2014. This is like ten years ago. 2014, at least, right? Yeah, it was twenty fourteen. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, th this is this is ancient history. And um, basically the deal was they had this web series. If you don't if you don't remember Azeroth Choppers, they had a, they had a web series where two teams of uh, of Blizzard devs worked with this bike customization shop to make like an alliance motorcycle and a horde motorcycle. And th there was like a community vote on which one was better. And then whichever one was the, the victor players were going to get an in-game version of it, yeah. you know. 
and the horde one was was victorious and then we all got them a little bit later on via you know it was just like a if you log in you get it or whatever and yeah that was that and then you could buy the alliance one for some absurd sum of gold if you wanted it and i kind of forgot about this for the most part over the years and yeah apparently some people just never ended up being awarded the mount until this past week or so, so yeah it's, it's just pretty funny it's uh, that's like one of those one of those wacky wow stories that only sort of happens in a game that's this old with this much data and this many different the, you know things that have happened in it over the years it's like yeah i finally get that mount i didn't get 10 years 10 ago years ago yeah man oh man yeah all right, folks, with that, we want to take a moment to thank our patrons. They contribute a ton to our show and help us to improve on the content we create. Today, I'm giving a special shout out to Alianas, Arajian, James, Kapawi, Max, Pinky, Shorl, and Rager. Thank you so much for all that you do, as well as all of our patrons, past and present. Thank you so much for everything that you give to support the show. If you're someone who wants to support the show and hop in and keep us on the air, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash the starting zone. And you can uh, hop in there and, and support the show and become a patron at uh, whatever sort of tier you want to give. That's always appreciated. And uh, folks who are, you know, a little bit farther up there get different Discord name colors and access to a different Discord channel. And uh, there's lots of conversation that happens over there. So feel free to hop in and support if that's something you're up for. But thank you, patrons, past and present, for keeping us going and keeping uh, everything everything live and on, on the air. Absolutely, patrons. Thank you so much. We appreciate all your support. And, uh, you know, the Patreon's been going on for about seven years now, so it's a long time to be supporting the show, and we really appreciate it. It does help us keep the show on schedule, helps keep the archives online and everything like that, so we couldn't do it without you, so thank you so much for, for chipping in and, and supporting what we do around here. Oh, we appreciate it. Hey, folks, if you've enjoyed this episode of The Starting Zone, another great way to support the show is heading on over to your iTunes or Apple Podcasts and leaving us those five-star reviews. They help bump us up those charts. I think we were top five in the U.S., for video game podcast last top week 10. i saw top 10 i think we were like number four on the list or something that was crazy uh we were nine number on the list nine, at one point. it was yeah. nine i think yeah, that, yeah i mean that was the first time we cracked top 10 i don't know about ever but definitely in a really long time so um thank you so much for the downloads and also i mean geez that just kind of gives you an idea of how how hot and and how the strong the sentiment is around world of warcraft right now right like people are yeah. really interested in this game and and where it's going so it's always fun to be in in that spot where we're ramping up into something big yeah so here's one that comes in from the greatest nate entitled great listen says as a player returning from last plane in cataclysm i really enjoy the show and appreciate it it helps me uh get up to speed on goings on without having to uh to be reading wowhead or reddit all day it was a great help in getting back up to speed the last few months and has me really excited for The War Within. Well, speaking of things that happened more than 10 years ago, Jason, uh, thank you so much for returning after Cataclysm to support the show and hop in and and hang out and chat with us. Uh, man, oh man, uh, greatest Nate, I'm glad that we can help you out and support. Thank you for helping us out with support. And yeah, we're looking forward to War Within. It's going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot going on. It'll be fun. Absolutely, yeah. Welcome back. I mean, geez, since Cataclysm is a really long time, the game is is quite different than it was back then. Um, I think mostly for the better. I would say almost entirely for the better from Cataclysm specifically. But yeah, it's. I, I mean, that's the other thing that we see, you know, more and more of late is people coming back from really long absences or new players, you know. And um, it can be it can be tough to navigate on the way back in. And I think you know that's a thing that maybe WoW could improve upon is is really directing that returning or new player experience but that is part of the reason why i mean look at the discussion we had just earlier on this show about well th this stuff is up this week but do you really want to do it because it's not maybe the best use of your time depending on what your goals are and that's the kind of stuff that the game is not really gonna present to you you know and a lot of other media are maybe not the best place for that discussion to take place, right? So I feel like that is, um, that's a thing we, we love to dig into around here about like, how are you spending your time in the game and why? Or like, what should you consider spending your time on? Because, you know, that's, I, I think that's a real, that's a real decision point for people who are playing WoW or considering maybe, especially for somebody who used to play WoW and it's like, well, should I play it again? I don't know. It used to take so much time. I'm older now. I don't have that much time. Or, you know, I don't I don't know how to use my time wisely in WoW. Like, I, I think it's a real that's that's a legitimate problem, like for the game in general. And, and that players have to 
confront, you know, for themselves. And so that's, that's a spot where we really want to dig into how to do that, you know, and how to, how to get the most out of that time that you are spending. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important to be sure that you feel like the time that you're putting into the game is worth it for you and you're doing what's right for you. So absolutely. All right. That wraps up episode 644 of the starting zone. If you want to check out show notes for this episode or leave us a comment on the show, you can head on over to the starting zone.com, the official website for the starting zone podcast. If you want to contact the show and leave us your feedback or ask a question, you can email us at the starting zone at gmail.com or reach out to us on Twitter at the starting zone. Or like I said, you can join our discord server, the starting zone.com slash discord. We'll put you at the button that you click to join our discord server and you can hop in there and chat with folks. And if you want to get your hands on some TSE gear, some shirts or mugs or stickers, things like that, you can go to tpublic, that's teepublic.com slash stores slash the starting zone and check out all the stuff over there. Jason, if folks are fi- trying to find you, where can they find you on the interwebs? The best place to find me as always is over on Twitter. You can find me over there at Shieldwald. And you can also find me over on Blue Sky. The username is just Lucas over there. So come say hi at either of those spots. And you can also find the video channels over on twitch.tv slash shieldwald and youtube.com slash shieldwald. I did a little bit of streaming when I got back from vacation this past week, just doing some Radiant Echo stuff and just, you know, trying to get the stream set up and running and actually going back out to YouTube for the first time in a while. So the, it's up and running. Um, WoW schedule will probably be light this week, so stream schedule also will be light as a result. But, I mean, we're not that far away now. You know, another another 10 days, we'll be doing all kinds of War and stuff over there. So come check those out. Right, you're trying to find me, you can find me on Twitter at Spencer underscore Downey or over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Spencer HD and uh, YouTube.com slash at Spencer HD. And with that, for Jason and myself, we want to say thanks for listening and jobs done. <laughs>